Welcome to yet another Champions League fantasy video. Now, not a great week for me in terms of the round of 16. And there's a few things, obviously, that I regret and some things that were kind of outside my control. But it is what it is and uh, definitely will learn from this. And the quarterfinals are really interesting. The fact that the tournament now is pretty much like a mini World Cup and there's pretty much one game each round instead of two legs for the quarterfinals and semifinals. It makes it much more open for teams like Atalanta, Atletico Madrid, PSG. And Leipzig, who have never won it before, and even Manchester City. But yeah, this might be a really weird tournament. One of the so-called dark horses might end up winning the whole thing or reaching the final. And yeah, maybe the big favourites like Bayern Munich and Manchester City, they might not even uh, win the whole thing. Um, but you never know. They're still my two favourites to win the competition. And that's one thing you really need to have in mind now. Um, because we have unlimited transfers and you have to use them wisely. You have to think... Not only who's going to get me points, but who do you think will not only go through for this round, but also for the next one potentially. And there's some interesting matchups that can happen. So if Bayern go through, or Barcelona, they will end up most likely facing Manchester City. But you can't discount Leon. They knocked out Juventus on away goals. So that's the thing. Anything can happen in this competition now with such a big break in between all the matches. But we'll see what happens. Um, Lewandowski I've had from pretty much the beginning, but I, I will admit, because of the injury concern that he had after this game uh, in London when they won 3-0, I actually took him out of my team because he was going to miss the second leg. But because of the matches being suspended, he's obviously played the second game and I couldn't transfer him back in because in Champions League fantasy, you have to wait until the round is completely finished. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have him. But pretty much whenever he plays, he's just always doing well. Him, Kevin De Bruyne and Messi... And Ronaldo are the four best players this season. Um, in my opinion, it's between Lewandowski and Messi but uh, and De Bruyne. But he's just literally every game he plays, he's he's scoring goals. And wow, Lewandowski, for me, he's a must-have. And I know Barca might knock him out. But realistically, the big favourites are Bayern. And Lewandowski is the best player in the Champions League this season by far. And he's now joined Messi and Ronaldo as being the only players to score 13 goals or more in a Champions League season, which is insane, to be honest. And he's also got a few assists to his name. He got two assists again against Chelsea. And uh, yeah, definitely missed his points. One big decision that was in my control, but I made a mistake in, was not getting Ilicic in. And he got an, just an amazing performance, one of the best this season against Valencia. But the thing is now, he's probably going to miss the next game and hopefully he gets well soon because uh, I heard, you know, he's not going for a great time now. And he's a very good player. I think if he played against PSG, Atlanta would have even greater chance to beat them. And with all these suspensions and injuries that PSG have, I think this is the time for Atlanta to really grab the occasion and go through. But yeah, I'll talk through my team now. Keylor Navas in goal. He's pretty much the highest scoring keeper this season, along uh, with Oblak, I believe. But yeah, Keylor Navas, fantastic keeper. The only thing is with him is PSG's defence can be a bit shaky and they're facing a very good Atalanta attack. But I think with him and Edison, and I also might go to Oblak, I think I'm pretty good there. The only reason why I might just favour Edison is because I've already got three Atletico players, including two defenders. And... Yeah, with City, I know Edison's going to start and they're playing Leon, which on paper is the easiest. However, I know that Leon on a pushover. They finished seventh in Ligue 1 and you'd think they are, but they've been doing pretty well in the Champions League so far. And people like Depay, they've been scoring every single game. And I've actually considered getting Depay, but because of my faith in Manchester City going through, which maybe is not very wise, I've put Gabriel Jesus for now. But this team isn't locked in and I might make changes. And if I do, I'll update it on this video in the comment section and in the description. But Kayla Navas, that's what I'm going with so far. Bernat as well, one of the highest scoring defenders this season, and so is Lodi. But yeah, with Bernat, he has more of the assist potential if you look at it. And uh, yeah, he misses some games. I think I had him uh, for this game against Dortmund where he actually missed the game. But yeah, Bernat, very good player, very good win back. And uh, if PSG get, keep a clean sheet on top of an assist, that's a lot of points. But Lodi, probably in defence is the most value for money and if Atletico go through they will face either PSG or Atalanta um, so yeah uh, they could pretty much you could see them reaching the final and to be honest Atletico is one of those teams that I hope they win it because they've reached a few finals and I think they deserve better I think they deserve to win at least one Champions League and I hope that they do it this year Simeone is one of the best coaches in the world 
and they've got one of the best defences still. Even though they've had a pretty lacklustre season in La Liga, they kind of turned it around towards the end. And this guy, Gussens, uh, from Atalanta, I'm not expecting a clean sheet, but he does have a bit of goal-scoring threat, and he's very good value for his money, so I've gone with him. And in terms of other defenders, I've got Lima, who did really well against Tottenham. As you can see here, nine points and then eight points. Uh, two back-to-back -back clean sheets and great performances from him and the whole Leipzig team. Now, the only thing I will say now is that Leipzig, they're missing Werner. And I know that doesn't affect them defensively, but still, I don't think they're going to be as potent or threatening on the attack. So maybe more teams will start to try to target their defence and try to control the games a bit more. I just I think Werner's a big blow to uh, Leipzig. He was pretty much their best player uh, now that he's at Chelsea. But still, I'm happy with him. And Felipe is the other defender. So I've got two Atletico Madrid defenders at the moment. I may change that. I don't like having too many players from one team as I found out with Liverpool. I had Mane, Salah and Trent. And I think I had Alisson at one point as well for the first leg. And yeah, it didn't go well. Um, that's why you can never tell with these games. But yeah, I think with the defence here, pretty happy with it. I also had Lenglet for a bit, um, then I changed to Felipe, so I'm not sure about that. Lenglet's one of the best options for Barca, in my opinion. Him and Messi are the only options that are viable. But, I don't know, with them facing Bayern and then facing possibly Manchester City in the next round, if they go through, I don't know, with Barca, it's really hard to fit in a player here. And going into the midfield now, if you look at it, a lot of midfielders... Uh, you don't have too many goal-scoring uh, threats. You, you know, the options that are quite obvious, Sterling, Mane, Salah, only one of them is there, Sterling. Nabry has been very good this season, but the thing that kind of puts me off him, even though I do have him, is that he's got most of his points in two games, against Chelsea in the away game and then against Spurs, when I believe he got 22 points. So, yeah, uh, in every other game, he's pretty much got f five points or below um so with Nabri, i don't know he's a very explosive player but not consistent i would say however only 8.3 million and i think he is still one of the best options at bayern munich um that's why i have him and raheem sterling i think he's a must have in the champions league he's pretty much the top scoring midfielder along with Nabri. and yeah he's kind of not done too much in the last few games but he did score against madrid and uh Against Lyon, I think he can have some joy. The only thing is that Manchester City actually have struggled to Lyon in the Champions League in recent seasons, even though it was the group stages and it's a different scenario. I don't know, but I think Sterling is one of the best players to have. Now, the other option I also have in mind, because like I said, this team is not locked in yet, is having De Bruyne instead of Nabry. Now, De Bruyne, in my opinion, is one of the best players in the world, definitely the best midfield in the world. But sometimes when Manchester City score goals, he is doing the pass before the assist. And you obviously want to maximise your points, returns, especially if you have someone who's over 10 million. So that's the thing with De Bruyne. I really want him in my team, but I also look at it and think, well, maybe he's not going to get the points that you want. But the game against Madrid, the only time where he's put in, in double digits pretty much, you saw De Bruyne there at his absolute best, grabbing a big game and completely dominating it. Even in the second leg at the Etihad. In my opinion, he was man of the match because he literally controlled all of the things behind the scenes. He created pretty much, I think, nine or ten chances, which is the third highest of any Champions League game behind people like Meza Ozil and Eva Benega. So, yeah, De Bruyne is different gravy, but I don't know if I'm going to have him in my team. I'll be honest there. Pasalic, I think him or Alejandro Gomez are the best options to have from Atalanta because Ilicic is most likely not going to play the next game. Otherwise, Ilicic would definitely be in my team. In my opinion, Ilicic is probably their best player along with Gomez, but Ilicic has that goal threat and in the Champions League he's proven it. But I think um, Pasalic or Gomez are probably the best options considering that Ilicic is now out. And I do think that Atalanta have a chance of going through, even though, as you can see here, I do have three PSG players, so I slightly still favour PSG there. Sabitzer in midfield, he's pretty much the best option to have from Leipzig now. He's got a lot of points. Um, he, I think he even had more points than Werner, but... I don't know. I'm not confident in him going through. That's why I've only got two Leipzig players as opposed to three Atletico. But you never know with this competition. Like I said, it's only one game. So maybe Leipzig will go through and maybe more of the underdogs like Atalanta will actually progress to the semi-finals, which would be incredible, really. Um, and my other midfielder is actually Thomas Party at the moment. Now, I know it's a bit weird to have a defensive midfielder. I'd never do this in Fantasy Premier League, for example. But this stat uh, or this point system of balls recovered actually makes defensive midfielders like him and Tossar before very viable options because they can literally pick up five, four points, even six points or more 
because of their ball recoveries, even if they don't get a clean sheet. So here, for example, they conceded twice against Liverpool, but he still gets six points. That's uh, very, very handy in there. And Thomas, one of the best in his position in the world, in my opinion. So, yeah, and I would expect him to continue starting and to continue producing like he's been doing. But the thing is, I'm not really sure... Um, with Atletico attack, uh, you don't want to waste an attacking spot on Atletico. You want probably the three best goal scoring teams or three of the teams you expect to go the furthest. So really, for Atletico, you want the defenders or Oblak or maybe a Thomas in there in midfield. So that, that's what I've gone with. Overall, not too many options from midfield uh, for goal scoring. If Ilicic was there uh, and ready, then he's a very good option to have, and I definitely have him on my team. Di Maria now. I know the game hasn't marked this, but he's actually suspended for the Atalanta game. And this is what I mean when uh, I keep saying in every single video, you've got to be prepared and you've got to pretty much do your own research because I didn't even know some of these things. The game didn't mark Tossar as transferred out, and I didn't know this, but he went to Hertha Berlin, so he missed the second leg. And he was a fantastic option for Lyon, and he would still be in the Champions League, but he left the team. Um, so that's something that I missed out on. Also, Di Maria... I didn't know that he was actually going to be suspended for the next game. And he got the points uh, in the last game week, but he's not going to get any points this week. So I had to transfer him out. And uh, I'm very thankful about this uh, unlimited transfers. Otherwise, my team would be looking really bad. And I don't even want to revisit last week, if I'm being honest. But going into the final three, the forwards. Lewandowski, like I've already said, must have. I just transferred out Messi for him, and I'm happy that Messi delivered for me. And he also had a goal chalked off, Lionel Messi. But yeah, just that that's Messi. He just he can create a moment out of nothing. Everyone knows. Uh, there's no need to uh, talk about how good he is. The only thing with uh, him is that Barcelona as a whole, although they look pretty good against Napoli in the second leg, I'm not as confident in them overall because if you think about it, they don't really have goals from midfield. So Messi's literally playing three roles in one. He's playing on the wing, uh, trying to take people on. Then he's playing in midfield, trying to create chances. And then he actually has to finish the chances himself. And I think they depend way too much on him. So if Messi isn't completely on his day against Bayern and the rest of the players help him to pretty much carry them to that victory, I just don't see Barca winning and Lewandowski is pretty much scoring every single game in the Champions League, so I back him at the moment. Uh, maybe could get rid of Neymar for Messi, but I'll wait for that. Um, the reason why I've opted for Neymar as of now is because he faces Atalanta, and on his side of the draw, it kind of looks a bit easier, and even if Neymar gets knocked out, against Atalanta's defence, I do back PSG to maybe get a few goals, and Neymar would be the, the main source of that. Uh, bear in mind that Mbappe is going to miss this game as well. He's injured. Hopefully he gets well soon because you want to see the best players in the Champions League playing pretty much. And uh, yeah, my final option, Gabriel Jesus. It's a bit of a toss-up between him and Depay. Before I had the free striker structure of Messi, Lewandowski and Haaland, but Haaland's knocked out, obviously. You've got to kind of uh, adapt. And because there's fewer midfield options available now, I opted for a bit more of a premium option or middle range option in Gabriel Jesus. But that's my team. I'm very confident in it, but I might make some changes. For example, De Bruyne in for Nabry, uh, De Pai in for Jesus, or maybe someone else, Messi for Neymar. Uh, it remains to be seen. But bear in mind, every single game is pretty much on, yeah, so it's one game per day. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So you can have a different captain option every single day. So if I look at my team now, I'll talk you through the captain options that I will have for each day. For the first day, Atalanta versus PSG, I will have Neymar. And bear in mind, don't think too much about, oh, who is home, who's away. It's a neutral venue in uh, Lisbon, I believe. So yeah, uh, don't think too much about that. But Neymar will be my option for the first day. Leipzig against Atletico. I'd probably captain Sabitzer or Lodi or yeah, I probably, the thing is I, I back Leipzig to potentially score, but I'm not sure. And I, you don't really want to captain a, a defender. Um, but I do back a little a bit more to go through. So yeah, let's just say I'm going to go with Lodi. Not ideal though. And uh, Barcelona against Bayern has to be Lewandowski. Even if it's against Barcelona, it's not a great Barcelona team. I think they still need a bit of time to build and to become even more competitive and to be on Bayern's level. But having said all that, Barca can still go through. The fact that they have Messi, it counts for something all the time. So they have a chance. The thing is I'm saying is that I back Bayern to go through. But yeah. Lewandowski would be my captain for that, for sure. And Man City against Leon, I would probably captain Sterling for that. 
So there you go, that's all my captain options for each single day. Uh, let me know what your captain options are for every single day and uh, who has carried you. In this season, it's been Lewandowski, but not having him for that second leg against Chelsea has cost me a lot. And like I said, I was in the top 9k uh, at the beginning of the season after three, four games. But I've been going down ever since. And not having Lewandowski for the last game, one of the reasons why uh, why I've dropped rank a lot. I um, believe I'm around 30k now. So not ideal. But yeah, let me know all your captain options. Who are you going to pick? And which teams are you really going to go in for? Because as you can tell, I've got no Barcelona players. Uh, no Leon players, really. So not really ideal. I had Aura in for a bit, but then I substituted him out for Sabitzer. There's so many options you can have, but at the end of the day, you have to pick players that you think will most likely go through, but you can't just put all your eggs in one basket um, because let's say if PSG and Manchester City go out, literally that's six players I have to transfer out, or Atletico, that I, I hope they all go through, but I will be doing a bit more changing, I believe. This is not set in stone, but thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new and uh, share it with your friends and family and good luck with your Champions League season. It's a bit turbulent. There's fewer games than uh, well than we thought there would be before and that kind of changes the whole complexion of the the points and uh, of the tournament. So anyone can win, uh, not only in Fantasy League, but also in the actual Champions League. And I think there will be some upsets and hopefully it doesn't affect the teams too much. And for the next round, there should be five transfers before the semi-final. So that's why you've got to be very careful with who you pick because you want to have a team that you think most of them will go into the next round. Otherwise, you might have to take point hits and that's not ideal, especially if you're trying to chase or you're trying to basically build as many points as possible. So thank you for watching this video. Good luck and I will see you next time.